lesbian population uh, by, by district. Uh, one of the things that your data doesn't <coughs> deal, deal with uh, is House rules or committee rules. Uh, one of the committee rules on the Foreign Affairs Committee is that before a resolution or bill gets taken up on the floor, particularly one of these sort of non-controversial resolutions like most of the Korea ones are, you can't have it taken up unless you have, uh, I don't remember the numbers, 15 or 20 House uh, members of the Foreign Affairs Committee as co-sponsors. And therefore, there's a real premium to getting people on the Foreign Affairs Committee on the bill. And so members will personally go out and say, would you co-sponsor my bill? What you want to do is get senior members of the Foreign Affairs Committee, because that makes it easier to get other members of the Foreign Affairs Committee. So the House rules are skewing uh, the number of Foreign Affairs Committee members who co-sponsor, uh, simply because they've got to get co-sponsors or they'll never get action on, on the bill. Uh, one other thing that also uh, is uh, skewed is the Republican versus Democrat on co-sponsorships because there are some major differences that are reflected by who was in control. Uh, when Democrats were in control, you co-sponsored Democratic bills because those were ones that were going to move. When Republicans were in control, in fact, uh, the first year after they uh, took the House back in, in 94, there were no, no Democratic bills that were brought to the floor. Now there's a ratio. Two-thirds of the bills that come to the floor under suspension, the non-controversial bills, are from the majority party. One-third are from the minority party. And so that's going to skew results depending on who is in, in control of the, of the House over time. So there are some issues there in terms of One of the other things that, that doesn't come out in this is there are a lot of idiosyncrasies in this. Some members, as a matter of practice, do not co-sponsor. Some members have staff who are very anxious to get their boss on bills, and they see it as their responsibility to do that. And the result is you tend to get a lot of people to come on bills uh, because they've got a staff that's aggressive and wanting to put their boss on them. Uh, the one thing that I think you might have a problem with, North Korea is a very interesting issue. I think it's an extremely interesting issue. Uh, but uh, you may have a sample that's too small. Uh, you might be better off to try to look at another issue where you can get bigger, uh, bigger numbers, and and I think your correlations will probably work out better if you can get some larger numbers. Having uh, what was 26 bills that you were looking at, I think is a, is a fairly a small number, but sure. interesting, but an extremely interesting paper. Okay, just 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 briefly on many good points. I mean, excellent points. I'm, I mean, that's why I'm here. I'm very appreciative. I mean, the way you asked for feedback. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, David Mayhew. I mean, the single-minded secrets of re-election. I mean, in 1974, in his book, Electoral Connections. That's the kind of textbook uh, for every, I mean, uh, graduate student studying Congress to read. But on the outset, I mean, his notion that the members of Congress are single-minded secrets of re-election are very controversial because. Richard Fano, in 1974, the other big name in the state of Congress has mentioned that it's not just re-election, making good public policy and uh, promotion in, uh, in power uh, within the chamber. And I do the mm -hmm. Sure, right, right. But this is a, lot of, a, a little bit off topic, but I mean, if you uh, look at I mean, the high-ranked journal publications on the study of Congress, I mean, a lot of David Mayhew's uh, students are dominating the, the methods and approaches to the study of Congress I mean, from Yale and Rochester and Stanford. I mean, so many is a number-driven and statistics-driven approaches. So when you have a single-minded secret of re-election, that's very good for mathematical analysis of Congress compared to those three different objectives as laid out by Richard Fenn. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> And Diane Watson, I mean, I have checked, I mean, the, uh, where is she? And then the, she, I think she is in place I mean, three time uh, co sponsorships. So um, she's, she's coming. She, she's, <laughs> she's here. She I know. I know. That's right. She's not running for re election, so she's not so. Okay. <laughs> All right. And state population and senators, I mean, state population thing, sure. I mean, that, of course, it's, 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 uh, it's not. I mean, I need to find out a better uh, data set because I'm comparing congressional district and state population. You know, that's a a little two different things, right? So, in Wyoming, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
and uh, Republican control and Democratic control. I mean, I, I totally agree I mean, with your op uh, observation. And, and also, uh, it depends on who is sponsoring uh, the bills and resolutions. That has a lot to do with who are following. So if a Republican member is sponsoring, then a lot of Republican members are, are following to be co-sponsors. If a Democrat is a, is a sponsor, like Pete Stark, yeah. uh, uh, L.C. Uh, Hastings. Pete Stark picked up all of the liberal uh, Republicans who were supporting the Constitution. And that's what he did. And, and that's why Ed Markey appears on the list. Mm -hmm. Ed Markey is not on foreign affairs. He doesn't do much on the right. He doesn't be okay on those issues. It's, it's just not his issue. His issue is proliferation. And that's why he is there so often. Right, right, right. right. And um, the, the, the idiosyncrasy. I mean, the, so I, I was looking. I was, I was expecting to see the names like Earl Pomeroy or uh, Carolyn Maloney or Gregory Mix. I mean, those people who are, I mean, having a huge interest in, uh, in Korea and North. Well, I mean, the Earl Pomeroy, I mean, congressman from North Dakota. I mean, is, uh, I mean, he, I mean, he has a great interest in South Korea side because a lot of agricultural products and exports to South Korea. I mean, if you know or not, I mean, he has a two adopted uh, a son and daughter from Korea. I mean, he showed me, I mean, uh, the picture of the two uh, children. I mean, he was very proud of their children uh, in his office because I had a chance to interview with Paul Pomeroy, John Adler, and Gregory Mix, and uh, Carolyn Maloney, and my former boss, uh, 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 Louis Stoke. Uh, sample size, too small. Sure, 26. Let's get some more bills. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, like I said, but I have excluded many other bills and resolutions of having yeah. any other names other than North Korea, right? I mean, Syria, Iran, eh. So I just wanted to, I mean, to, to, just address the, the DPRK direct kind of bills and resolutions. That might be the why, but I definitely I have to expand my data set. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, try it. Yeah, I just I would like to kind of expand on some of this discussion a little here briefly, and maybe pull out another thread. And you've touched on it a little. Um, how much is the South Korea factor? And the reason I say that is because, as Ambassador King pointed out, you know Watson's district stuck out to me as sort of the outlier in the data. And you know, for my at least my own personal interactions with her office, one of the things that I seemed to pick up was that they were much more interested in issues related to South Korea than North Korea. And any office, I mean, there's only so much bandwidth they can spend on any issue area. And so I kind of wonder if there's a way in your data or anything, or if you notice a pattern to where sort of an office that might seem to be far on the North Korea side, because they're more interested in South Korea issues, that it pulls them out as an outlier in terms of co-sponsorship. Uh, because you have the two Koreas rather than just, you know, like Iran is one country and one issue, to where now you have competition, basically. Sure. I haven't tapped any of the South Korea part, and then from my analysis, I have looked up, my, my research assistant actually has looked up the only North Korea. Because as, um, as you can see from my appendix, I mean, this data has come from Thomas. I mean, it's a very easy way <laughs> to find out in North Korea, two letter, I mean, and a building resolution. So I, I didn't have enough uh, opportunities to look at the South Korea side. But, um, well, I mean, as you know, it's, it's very interesting because if you deal with South Korea issue, then the economic issues, I mean, are, are going to be very important. So this is going to be very, uh, uh, huge uh, sort of a contrast between North Korea and other kind of countries like China or other. It's, it's a North Korea issue in terms of uh, other than human rights and uh, uh, nuclear and non-proliferation. North Korea issue is not necessarily dividing the domestic interest to a large extent because, I mean, we don't see an economic uh, uh, type divisive issue related to North Korea yet. So China, I mean, on my, my other paper, I mean, dealing with the, uh, the grant of MFN to China uh, from 1990 to 2000, it's, it's hugely divisive. It's, it's cut right through the middle of the two parties. I mean, like the case of immigration reform, as they talk about. And the Democratic Party, labor, uh, pro-labor union and uh, uh, pro-engagement uh, policy. That's a divisive uh, issue for the Democratic Party. Pro-business and uh, national security hawks. That's a divisive issue, issue for the Republican Party. But compared to the China issue and other issues, the North Korea issue is yet a divisive issue uh, enough. So I, I have to look up some South Korea part as well. But. Mm -hmm. 
I'll do that. Dr. Seal, do you, do you have any uh, 